Michael. Nice of you to be on time this morning. You're up first. Okay, everybody should be ready to report on the food groups that they researched. Oh, and take out your activity booklets so you can take notes. Okay, so I bet you're all wondering why I've asked you here today. Well, this is to talk to you about the meats, beans, and nuts food group. I made this poster to show you guys what I researched. Meats include foods like beef, chicken, fish, and pork. Beans include dry beans like pinto beans and split peas. Also, foods that are made from nuts like my personal fave, peanut butter. And of course, eggs. Um, I think eggs are in the dairy food group, Mike. Nope, they're in the meats, beans, and nuts food group. Even though in grocery stores they're in the dairy section. But they come from chickens and they have lots of protein in them. Which brings me to the reason why we need to eat lots of food from this food group. Kids our age are supposed to eat about six ounces of food each day because it gives us the majority of protein we eat. Okay, so I researched the milk and milk products food group. Milk is in this food group, of course, and so are foods made from milk, like yogurt and cheese. All of the foods in this food group give us calcium, which is one of the minerals that helps to build strong bones and teeth. I also found out that it's important for us to get as much calcium as we can now because the amount of calcium we have in our bodies from the time we're about 10 to 20 years old is the amount we're going to have for the rest of our lives. If we don't get enough calcium now, we can get osteoporosis when we're older. And that's a disease that makes the bones really weak so that they can break or even curve your spine. Nasty. Yeah, gross, right? I, I freaked me out so much that I kept drinking milk the whole time I researched this food. Group. <laughs> okay, so I made this model to show how much calcium we have in our bodies at the different times in our lives. I use flour to represent calcium. The first jar shows how much calcium we have in us when we're born. When we're 10 years old, we have this much. When we're 15 years old, we have this much. And when we're an adult, we have our maximum amount. But an adult who has osteoporosis has lost calcium down to this level. Big difference, huh? This just in. Investigative reporter Megan is live on the scene right now. Megan, what can you tell us? Thanks, Sarah. I'm standing in front of the downtown farmer's market where experts have just announced that vegetables are our main source of vitamin A. And they are now telling us that vitamin A is particularly good for our eyes and skin. In fact, I've been able to confirm through my sources that even though vitamin A is the main nutrient in vegetables, it is the combination of all the nutrients like potassium and fiber, which is thought to be what is really good for us. And we can get vegetables fresh, like this fabulous corn from the farmer's market. Or in juice, like this tomato juice. Or even canned, dried, or frozen, even in this salsa. Mmm, delicious. Okay, so I've made the slideshow on the fruits food group. So there are some fruits that are in the stores all the time, like apples and bananas. But there are some that you may not have eaten or even seen before, like kiwi and guava. So there are four main reasons why we need to eat two cups of fruit every day. First, fruit is our main source of vitamin C. If you cut your finger, it's vitamin C that helps your body grow new cells so the cut heals. Vitamin C also helps your body use the iron that you get from other foods, like hamburger from the meats, beans, and nuts food group. Some fruits also give us vitamin A, which is important for healthy eyes and skin. Welcome to everybody's favorite game show, The Bread Basket. I'm your host, Sarah. Are all the contestants ready to play? Yeah! Okay, each contestant will pick an answer from the board and have to come up with the correct question. Ready? Yeah! Okay, let's start with you. Contestant Megan, please make a selection. I'll take the grains, breads, and cereal food group for 10 points, Sarah. And the answer is... Breads, cereals, pasta, and rice. Hmm. What are foods in the grains, breads, and cereal food group? Well done, brilliant contestant. So, who's up next? Yes, you, Andrew. Please make a selection. Uh, I'll take the next one, um, 20. And the answer is an important source of energy found in breads and whole grains. What is protein? Eh, no, I'm sorry, sir. The correct question would have been, what are complex carbohydrates? So, You've learned some things about the five food groups and why you need foods from each of them to stay healthy. 
But let's be honest, unless someone's made chocolate into a sixth food group, not all the foods you probably eat are going to fit into the five food groups. Am I right? Foods that don't fit into the five food groups are called extra foods. Extra foods normally don't contain many important nutrients and or they're higher in sugar and fat, like cookies, donuts, soda, or potato chips. Some extra foods start out as food group foods, but during processing, sugar and or fat is added so that their nutrient content goes down and their fat or sugar content goes up. And voila, the food group food becomes an extra. Here's an example. Even though bacon is made from meat, the amount of fat it has in it outweighs the amount of protein it provides, so it's not included in the meats, beans, and nuts food group. But remember, there are no good or bad foods. What that means is that all foods, even extra foods, can be part of your food choices. It's all about how much and how often. Next time you're thinking about grabbing a bag of chips for a snack, try grabbing a good tasting favorite food group food like string cheese or a handful of almonds instead of a candy bar.